guys. Welcome back to our channel, Plots with the Twist, where we discuss books, amongst other things. And we know. We know even MIA. Mm -hmm. You know, COVID is a thing. I got COVID. Christmas. I wasn't going to tell on you. But <laughs> I mean, it was real. I got COVID, y'all, so we couldn't film together. And then holidays and then New Year. So we're back. See, I was just going to blame the state of affairs. But <laughs> yes. No, I was sick. She was sick as a dog. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we wanted to make sure we weren't spreading things. Mm -hmm. So we had to take a pause. And really, we just took a the time to regroup, really focus on trying to finish um, some books, come up with some creative ideas, mm -hmm. content, things like that. So we about to hit the ground running, y'all. Yes, so yes. happy new year. Happy I'm new mad year. I didn't get to do my holiday sweaters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just them. Always this year. <laughs> <laughs> but not that mad. I wanted her to be, gets better. Um, but yeah, so we're going to just start off the new year with some, some, our wrap up. What is this? Our wrap up, our mm -hmm. TBR. And then some of the videos we did have planned for December. Why <laughs> can't I say December? For December, mm -hmm. like, you know, best of the year, worst of the year. We'll leave that to y'all yes. later throughout the month. So let's get into it. Okay. So what did you end up reading? Did you read a lot for the month of December? Since I feel like I did. Reading? Yeah. I feel like I did. Okay, so I have to like recall what some of these books are about because <laughs> I told y'all my goal for December was to sprint towards the end of the year and get in a whole bunch of books, which I feel like I did, but I I didn't do I probably did a regular month, mm -hmm. but because previous months I had been slacking, so it felt like more. But okay. So first off, I did finish Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Allaire Sons. Mm. Okay, so um, again, about it's the sequel to uh, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe about pretty much uh, Aristotle and Dante are now in a, a full-fledged relationship um the first novel was their developing friendship second mm -hmm. novel it's more so their relationship and just how they navigate getting to know each other and understand each other a little bit better as well as deal with other factors when it comes to just how society might view them them coming to terms with their own sexuality more so aristotle kind of coming to terms um with his his sexuality as well as be, it being set in a time where like it's set in the late 80s i believe so it's during a time where they're um facing societal challenges as well so um i said last month i wasn't quite enjoying it as much as i did the first one i mean the book is a melodramatic book melodramatic i guess series at this point so if you're looking for excitement it's not it's not that at all it's very much about these these a coming of age story these characters journeys um and i did it did start to pick up for me a little bit as i got towards the middle and the ending um but i would just say it's very melodramatic so just be warned i did end up enjoying the overall story mm -hmm. end up enjoying where they got to um certain moments for me were weird and i think the reason why i probably didn't enjoy it so much because it seemed like aristotle was battling and grappling with so much internal confusion in the first one and it seemed like in the second one he's like i know who i am it's the rest of the world i gotta get to know who i am so it's just it seemed like that journey was ex escalated or you know kind of went faster than i would have thought it would have went mm -hmm. and so with me trying to catch up to him that's where i guess i was stuck as a reader i'm like i would think he would be grappling more now that he's actually in a relationship but mm -hmm. That's neither here nor there. Overall, I did enjoy the story and I, I would I would recommend it, but just be aware that it is kind of very melodramatic and very slow. <laughs> not really not slow. slow, but it's not slow. It's mm -hmm. it's weird. That's the best. I don't know. I don't even want to call it weird, but that's the best. That's the word that came to mind. So gotcha. As far as like the pacing is a little yes. weird. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I read finally, well, I'm not gonna say finally, but um, We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang. I had to look up the author real quick. So yeah, I finished that um, and it was basically about this family, the Brennans, this Irish family, and 
they grew up they are in new york and then the um the sister i think she's the only sister out of the bunch she um it starts off with her crashing her car in california and her brother coming to get her because she's like really banged up in the hospital and bringing her back home and then it goes into like why she left home and all her family like they kind of got like some secrets and all the brothers are dealing with different things um two of the brother well the brothers and the girl and the sisters ex-boyfriend are partners in a business they own a bar and the story kind of uh follows them trying to save the like trying to get things up and going with the second bar and seeing like what's going on why their uh other business is failing and all these things come out about the family and it was pretty good i gave it four stars um i thought it was a pretty good story i like stories about like families and a lot lots of siblings and stuff those are always interesting because you have so many characters that you can get into so um mm -hmm. in this particular one sunday i think was the sister and then what's the other ones anyway the other <laughs> three brothers like the two, See, it's hard. two of the I brothers think, i know one was jackie i know one was shane yeah i can't remember the oldest brother is it nick nick no Dan. let's stop um, guessing yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was something right his name was like something like regular but um yeah like it, it kind of goes more into like the oldest brother and like the sister and then their dad and then like everybody else kind of like the backstory but it gives like a little bit of backstory on each of the characters except for like the youngest brother i think so yeah it's pretty interesting pretty good um good way to end the year and kristen had already said that she liked the book so it's pretty good i i enjoyed it and i think that's her debut novel so i'll be interested to oh, see really? and, yeah i think so um to okay. see like what else she comes out with was a After good that. debut mm -hmm. i think so too all right so next i had to give her i was going to give her multiple chances i'm already a fan of hers but the last book i read wasn't quite as enjoyable mm -hmm. and that's leanne moriarty so i did go ahead and read her latest apples never fall mm -hmm. um so what was that about so it's a sibling metal <laughs> mellow yeah, drama in a that. in a way it's a mm -hmm. kind of a family saga but um, it focuses in on this family. They are a tennis family. So the mom and dad, the parents, they um, owned and operated a tennis school, um, training many tennis elites. Who have, only one made it like majors, but training tennis players. And um, the, four, the four children um, all grew up playing tennis. Um, so really that's the backbone of their family but pretty much something happens where their mom disappears. Mm -hmm. And so as they kind of work through the events of what happened and led to their mom's disappearance and trying to figure out where she is, you get uncovered, it uncovers some backstory from a year prior where her mom and dad had, uh, not her, where their mom and dad had um, this stranger staying with them. And so they're trying to figure out is the stranger that was staying with them involved? What is this attachment that this stranger had? Because as you go back and forth, you're like, why is this stranger here? Why are they letting the stranger stay? And just you just find out a lot of things about the family. Um, again, like um, I guess we are the Brandons, you know, things are uncovered as you read along. And ultimately, you just enjoy the ride as to, you know, you figure out what happened to the mom. Mm -hmm. They think the dad is involved in her disappearance. So it's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I will say I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Um, you know, it, it kind of went, I don't want to say went back, but it was more tried and true to the style that I know of Leanne Moriarty as mm -hmm. far as just time jumps, kind of having this part of the story, this part of the story, and you're trying to meet in the middle somewhere or this part this part and it's both going to lead to this so it's it's just like that's her style mm -hmm. um and it was just quite enjoyable trying to uh just figure out what's going on ultimately with this family why their relationships are the way they are um why tennis you know has positively or negatively impacted them so yeah it was, it was a very good book i really enjoyed it so she redeemed herself from what was the other one I didn't like? Nine Perfect Strangers. So. Oh, yeah. The show was good. I always say that when you bring up that book. <laughs> okay, so next book that I read was... Ooh, this is a good one. And, Chris, you could talk about it right after because I think you read it too. Um, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. So, 
this book is about this, i forgot the writer's name already the, don't go in, you said tia williams no i'm talking about the, the girl in the book the oh. main character so it's about um uh this writer um she writes is it nella you know nella was the main character of so many books i read last Girl. year was it nella it wasn't no what nella think? what was it i, I can't think it's of it bothering right. me it's eva eva mercy mm -hmm. so she but is her real name was genevieve yep or something like Some, that. Yeah. The way they was pronounced. Jean Bia. <laughs> yeah. Jean Bia. Oh, yeah. Because she was like from Louisiana. Okay. So, or her parents were. So anyway, so it's about this um, Eva who is a um, renowned fantasy uh, author. Uh, she has basically this fan club uh, sur surrounding her books called Cursed. And basically she is a romance. She reunites with this um, other like really renowned author named shane hall and they have seven days which is like a whirlwind and it's just tea it is tea it's so good um it was a really i actually read the physical book y'all y'all know it's so you. long yeah so um when we have cold baby ain't got nothing else to do so, <laughs> so yeah it was just a really good book we're gonna do a book review so we're not gonna go into too much detail we'll give you all of our thoughts and feelings about it there so yes yeah, stay tuned for that yes i read that too and yes mm -hmm. it is it's a good book. It's, I gave it. It's, what'd you give it? Watch the review and you'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. It is. It is one I would say people should read and maybe mm -hmm. have a conversation about. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's let we'll talk about that. But yes, that was one I read as well. Mm -hmm. So another book I read in December was *The Lost Apothecary* by Sarah Pinner. Mm -hmm. So I said that was a book I I got it on my Audible when it first came out last year. And um, and for some reason, I never pressed play. And then I started getting other, using my other Audible credits for other stuff. And I still wouldn't go back to it. So I was just everywhere with that book. But I had kept seeing it and I wanted to read it based off the premise alone. So the synopsis um, pretty much is about this. Um, it kind of, The story kind of centers between this story that... Um, or the events that happened in like the late 1700s as well as kind of overlap with events of current time so pretty much there's this woman this apothecary woman who doles out poisons to women to deal with certain men in their lives for specific reasons um she likes to keep a log of everything and really she kind of feels bad and feels like ultimately is impacting her negatively but that's the only way she knows how to do her business she's only helped women only stands by helping women and whatnot and ultimately um doesn't really care about their reasonings but uh but yeah so uh she does encounter this young girl who kind of aids her mistress and getting poisoned and then the young girl is kind of drawn to the uh apothecary and there ensues this odd kind of relationship um kind of like the girl is a little bit of an apprentice so to speak but that leads to the first time where a client comes in and requests to utilize the poison on another woman and so oh, because of that whole event it causes other events to happen um so fast forward to current day there's this woman who's on her anniversary trip alone because her and her husband are going through some marital issues and in her first like tourist event um she went mud larking i think that's what it's called where you go, like i don't know but pretty <laughs> much she found this vial um and there ensues this kind of she has a historical background historical uh history degree and stuff like that so she's really intrigued by um just kind of like the obscure the the past and there ensues this investigation of her trying to uncover this vial, her realizing it might belong to this apothecary that's related to all these murders. So it's kind of like the stories kind of overlap between this investigation and the current, the events of the past. Um, so overall, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the unfolding of events. What I will say, it's one that it's an entertaining story. That's what it is, an entertaining story. So if you're looking for something deeper, it's a it stays very surface level for me or stayed very surface level with all the characters. Like you don't really understand. Uh, you get some of the uh, apothecary's motivations, but it doesn't go deep into like how that's 
impacted her, how it's whatever. It's very like, oh, I do this because of this. I do this because of this. And it's like, okay, thank you. Um, so it's not one of those where you get a real hearty kind of character-based story. It's really you're there for the events that are happening. So I will say that. Other than that, um, yeah, that's really it. It's an enjoyable, entertaining story. If you're looking for something deeper, I wouldn't say that's the book for you because it is based off, I think, a real woman in history. Um, and if you're trying to understand more about that person, I wouldn't. Mm -mm. But other than that, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so last book I read um, for the month of December was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You know, we love her. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I've only read, I've read like three books from her. This is like the third or fourth book. Catch up. Um, <laughs> and so this I, okay, is about... Well, I read the same ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this is about another family, another uh, group of siblings, about the Rivas family. Yeah, Riva, Rivas. Rivas mm -hmm. family. So basically, um, it's about this family. They grew up in Malibu. They have a... Um, there's four siblings. Love a good sibling story, don't Right. We? <laughs> four siblings. The oldest... Um, is a girl then two middle brothers and the youngest girl and then so their dad is like this famous singer in like the 60s it's also kind of a historical thing because i think it takes place in like the 80s but it, it travels back and from like the 60s mm -hmm. or whatever dad is very famous singer i think i love frank sinatra or something that's the kind of vibe he was giving me like mm -hmm. that type of uh singer very famous um it goes back to the story like how he met how he met the mom and how the kids came to be and basically how he was in and out of their lives and um follows their uh stories they're surfers in malibu they live in malibu I guess that's why it's called malibu rising and yeah it just follows them and their story and their relationship with their dad and how they kind of had to grow up and despite of despite having a famous father but that was like never around and how they kind of dealt with that and um it goes into all the siblings and just how they deal with certain things it was good um should we do a book review on that y'all let us know yeah it's um, kind of a newer book so maybe but and it was a good story i i enjoyed it um at first i was like mm, i don't know because i had just read we are the brennans and i was like this is gonna be the same thing but it's, it's only similar in that it uh follows siblings and it's like a family thing but it's different that it's kind of historical and this family the brennans <laughs> They were a more tight knit. I feel mm -hmm. like they had kind of like a more family unit, um, and these, these this family did too, the Rivas, but just more so for the siblings. Yeah, they had like a sad family. beginning. Yeah. So yeah, um, very good story. I enjoyed it. Taylor Jenkins Reid. She kind of always hits. Like I'm, I don't think I've ever read anything by her that missed um, completely. So she's always enjoyable, and I'm gonna read everything she puts out. So. Okay. <laughs> so the last book I read. Oh, yeah. I'll mention. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Andy Doerr. Mm -hmm. I did plan to read that in December. I did start it and it it didn't seem like my type of story. So mm -hmm. I stopped it. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll revisit that later. But yeah, it, it was like historical fiction plus doom plus... Not doom. Yes. It, it has three different doom timelines. Doom or doom? Doom. It has three different yeah. timelines. I, I don't... No, I don't like that. Three different parallel you like mm -hmm. it we might try that enough again for another day but wanted to mention that since i did have it on my tbr last month but i did finish finally we are not like them mm -hmm. um by christine pride and joe piazza mm -hmm. i hope i'm saying it right okay um so again we're reading more of the same books again mm -hmm. so if you all want um, a super detailed and in-depth review let us know um we we already identify what we want to review, but mm -hmm. also we don't want to review like every single thing. Yeah. Um, unless y'all want us to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know. This for y'all. Um, so this is about pretty much two friends. One is black, one is white. They grew up together since they were five. And then mm -hmm. the black um, friend went off to college, um, became a news reporter, ended up moving back to the town and then the white friend she didn't really go to college um she ended up marrying a police officer and they're uh struggling and trying to get a have a child and she ends up finally getting pregnant um around the time when the, the black friend does move back home so uh pretty much 
the husband of the white friend, I mean, we've already explained this before. The mm -hmm. husband of the white friend ends up shooting an unarmed teen and um, the black friend black ends up, mm -hmm. an unarmed black uh, teen, mm -hmm. and the black friend ends up having to report on it and it causes a strain on their friendship. So it does alternate perspectives um, between chapters between the two of them. And then ultimately, um, just really dives into just the the their friendship, their feelings, and really the whole book to me was a a, a necessary. I don't want to say necessary. Um, yeah, uh, the whole book was just a a dive into race, mm -hmm. the conversation of race. Um, so overall. I enjoyed the book. Um, I really did. I really didn't think I would because I get touchy around certain subject matter. And um, I will say it it was kind of like, I don't know if I want to hear this. But it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, it I does tell like it in a way that it's not that. It's not very much that, even though that is very much the center. But mm -hmm. it does dive into their lives of how they're trying to understand and navigate their relationship to the events that happen as well as race. Mm -hmm. um, because for the white, what's her name? I know one is Riley and mm -hmm. I forgot. <laughs> Jenny. Mm -hmm. The white woman is Jenny. Um, you know, she never thought about race, but Riley is like, I always have to think about race. So it, it kind of grapples with that juxtaposition of worlds. Um, I mean, it, at certain points, it is frustrating because it's like, Riley, just say what you mean. Mm -hmm. Or Jenny, just kind of tell her. Like, it was conversations that they weren't having that you felt would help the characters break through a little bit more but for the most part i think it it begged the the necessary questions that um people who may have friendships like that or people who don't understand certain things about race it did bring up a lot of things that um would help maybe you know the the other person understand so i enjoyed the book mm -hmm. i did enjoy it so yeah, and yeah. I felt like it was a really good book um, written by like two different authors, mm -hmm. but it still had like one one voice. voice. Yeah, yep. even though it was two like perspectives, like it came together really well. You didn't feel like you were reading two different uh, books or two different authors. Yes. So, yeah. All right. So that's what we read December. Mm -hmm. What we reading for the new year? <laughs> okay. okay. So what you got? You start. Okay. So first and foremost, y'all know I don't usually do nonfiction. Um, y'all know I usually don't do memoirs, but I will do one on occasion. Um, my husband got this book as well <laughs> as I got it on Audible. So I am going to tackle, um, Will by Will Smith. I think that's cute because mm -hmm. he is all about Will, mm -hmm. but like, I like it's, the cover it's too. a double entendre. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Cause it's got like, isn't he from Philly? Mm -hmm. Got like graffiti it seems like it's got is that it pictures in it can i see it i don't know yeah it looks like it is um so i plan to tackle that it's just a memoir of you know events throughout oh, his yes. life um and he is a really powerful and motivating person just in general speaker, yeah. um good advice yeah so i think i will enjoy the book and the messaging um pictures, so yeah i'm gonna tackle it i'm gonna cool I'm gonna try. It's a, lo a little bit longer. Like I, I did do Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, but it was a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is a little bit longer. So we'll he see. narrates the audio, audio too. Okay, like. so it might feel like a conversation like that one did. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna tackle that this month. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna just mention one that Kristen mentioned already because I had just saw it on the list of stuff, and that's um, Apples ne Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. That's it's good. good it's been um a while since i've read one of her books so yeah i, I didn't read nine perfect strangers because i had watched the show and i heard the book wasn't i heard the book wasn't, <laughs> it was bad so i just it's not the show. bad it's not good <laughs> so yeah i i miss uh the Yang. she's a good little guilty pleasure read for me sometimes yeah apples and, never fall is a good little guilty yeah pleasure. so and i haven't read a thriller in a while so that'll be nice that'll be fun so yeah that's yep. on my list for this month all right so i told y'all i became a fan of his writing so i went ahead and checked out his latest and that is ooh, glare um under the whispering door by tj clune mm -hmm. um i'm not quite sure what it's about literally there's some authors where i, I just buy in immediately and he's i'm hoping he's going to become that for me so that his first book not his first book the first one i read um 
The House in the Cerulean Sea. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. I will highly recommend that book. Um, I'm going to tell Asia to read that book. I think I've seen it somewhere. I'll check it out. Let me see. So, yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I was whisked away by his writing, and I'm hoping that that's the same case for this. So, I'm going to check it out this month. Okay, so next on my list is a book that I just came across this morning while looking through Goodreads and seeing what all the fuss was about for this month. Um, and that's Olga Dies Dreaming by... Say it right. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> so that's what, don't you pronounce an X with a Z? Like with Z? Yeah. So I want to say it's Zachitil. Mm -hmm. Don't try. Zachitil Gonzalez. Now, I'm, I know I butchered that. Sorry. But yeah, so I'm not sure what this is about either. I think it's about like two siblings when I read the synopsis. It's me reading the synopsis right now. You um, love siblings. You really do. Huh? I know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's about two siblings growing up in New York. Um, oh. and But they're like... You love a good New York you setting. You know, I love a good New York setting. So one is a congressman and the other is a something. So yeah, I want to check that out. It's one of the... It was on the list of highly anticipated books for this month. So yeah, I've already got it on Audible or Script or whatever. So I'm going to listen to it. And I'm excited. All right. Speaking of highly anticipated books, um, I started, uh, I'm going to read Akata Warrior this month by Nindi Okafor, I believe. I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So she did uh, come out with her third book. I believe it either comes out this month or beginning of next month. I'm not quite sure <laughs> the time frame. Um, but the third book is Akata Woman. Um, and I started a Cuddle, uh, Witch last year and I just didn't pick up the sequel quite yet. I was trying to get through some other books, but now it's a good, perfect timing, um, with her newest coming out. So I will tackle the second in the series, mm -hmm. a Cuddle Warrior. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So the last book that I'm going to try to read is called The Paper Palace by... Mor I think Miranda somebody. I've been waiting for this book for forever from Libby because um, it's just been on hold for forever. Let me see who's by for real. Yeah, so The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I forgot what it's about, but I just know that it was one of those books that everybody said. It's a Reese book club thing, so oh. you know it's probably going to be at least some type of good. But it's been like on hold for forever, so I guess it's really popular. So I plan on reading that. Um, this I month feel like as I saw well. that on the Kindle deals. Maybe I need to go mm -hmm. ahead and buy it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should. All <laughs> right, so I had one more plan to read, and then another possible. <laughs> I got one in a possible space place, y'all know. Um, so the next or last book I plan to uh, officially read is Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. I've had some of her writings or some of her books on my list, TBR list for some time, and I just never tackled them. And um, we've been talking about Scribd like low key, but we never really announced that we, oh, Scribd is a new subscription service we've been using. I mm -hmm. think it's pronounced Scribd, mm -hmm. um, but pretty much it's kind of like Netflix for books. Mm -hmm. um, and so now that we have a, a more immediate availability, I've just been kind of tackling some titles and some authors that I that have been on my list and now I got them. Um, so yeah, that was her latest book. Um, I did have Sometimes I Lie on my list too, but I'll go back to that. Um, so yeah, Rock, Pepper, Scissors is just about a couple. They're um, pretty much on their wits end with their relationship and they go ahead and go to this Scotland trip to figure out their relationship. But something sinister is going on. So um, that's that one. And then the last one, again, Colleen Hoover is another person I've had on my TBR list forever. Um, she primarily does romances, which is probably why I wasn't so quick to pick it up. Because even though I've, we read Seven Days in June, romance is really not a genre, genre we gravitate towards mm -hmm. for some reason. Even though, again... It's not going to be just romance. It's yeah. just that mental thing. Um, so I saw one of our subscribers did uh, suggest variety. Verity. Am I saying it right? Verity. So um, I'm going to try to go ahead and tackle that if I can get through the rest of my books this month. So, okay. Boom. That's it. Yes. We back. We did a good this COVID. Month. Stay at bay. Yeah. So we can do this thing for y'all mm -hmm. um let us know what you all are reading yes. let us know any suggestions let us know any thoughts on anything we've mentioned here today mm -hmm. like this video subscribe ring the bell and we'll be back next time bye, bye.